Welcome to STS Presents. I'm Lucas Siska. We got a special treat for you today. Uh, we're going to interview Olympian world-class runner Stuart Stokes. He's, he's competed at the highest level. Uh, he's been in some uh, every championship event that you can think of, Commonwealth Games, Europeans, uh, you name it, he's been there. Um, so I, it's my pleasure to introduce Stuart Stokes. Come on in, Stuart. All right, thank you for coming here, Stuart. No problem. All right, so we want to talk running. We want to talk running so people can really find out what the best in the world do uh, to, get, to get to the top of their own game. Yeah, so, so the first question is, the first question is, is what would you say, just anybody, what, what do they need to do to maximize their running ability? Um, I think you said it right there, maximizing your potential. Um, I think when I when I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think when I when I look back on my career, this this I mean, you, you know, like you see, you've just introduced that I went to major championships. Um, but when I look back over my career, what I'm most what I'm most proud of is that I got the best out of my body. I got the best out of the. the I left no stone unturned. Um, I did everything possible that I could get out of my body. And it's nice when I'm when I've retired from running now to look back and think I could not have given any more. Right. I couldn't have done any more mentally, physically, emotionally. I sacrificed everything. There was there was nothing that that, that I didn't push for. That's um, what it takes people. <laughs> and, that, and that's obviously in terms of um, the nutrition side of it, and the supplement side, the conditioning work in the gym, and the rehab, the obviously the training runs, the track sessions, the the whole package. Um, I I was obsessed with finding the best people in on the planet. Um, you know, if if I should be taking a protein shake after my training, what was the best protein shake available? You could get yeah. Uh, who's the best nutritionist who will tell me about that? Um, and I sought those people out, and I was I was fanatical and obsessed about about getting the best out myself. Um, the reason I had to do that is because I, I learned very young that I wasn't very gifted. Um, I wasn't naturally talented. I, I know, obviously, I, I made it to a decent level. Um, but I, but I, I trained with people who were genetically a lot better than me. You know, hmm. natural speed, um, natural ability. I didn't really have that. Um, Everything. People, people. He could he could run five miles in twenty two minutes uh. <laughs> <laughs> through hard work. Yeah. Um, but seriously, I mean, the the number of guys who I train with, where I I used to do speed sessions with them, I used to walk off and just think they have something I don't have. Hmm, uh, that's interesting. Not all of them made it to the level that I did because they weren't prepared to work hard. They, they couldn't do the outside make, things. They yeah. didn't do all the other things. Um, but I wasn't naturally talented. Every physiological test that I did showed that I was a pretty mediocre person, a mediocre athlete. Um, and I literally used the, everything possible in order to, to, to compensate for that, if you like. Right, right, um, right. And, and don't get me wrong, in I pushed myself as, as hard as I physically could. You have to to reach that Absolutely. level. Absolutely. Right. Um, you know, when... when People say to me that, I mean, I, I, you know, when you talk to athletes and I, they say that they're training really hard, um, I, I often joke and say, oh, do you get up, how do you get upstairs at night? Oh, I just walk up the stairs. <laughs> You're not training hard. Not training yeah. hard, yeah. Um, <laughs> another one I always say is, it sounds a bit weird, this, but when you go, especially for guys, when you go on the toilet, do you wee standing up? <laughs> And when I was training hard, I couldn't do that. I, I had to sit down. I was that tired. That's what it takes. That's, <laughs> That's what, what it takes. takes. As That's crazy as it sounds. But it's little things like that. I just, I, I pushed myself to the max. I read, yeah. I read in a news article about you that was a few years ago that uh, you said that when you were in your peak training, you'd go to bed at 7.45 at night. Is, is that true? Yeah, I, I still do. <laughs> <Are you> still <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I um, in fact, I know we, we spoke earlier about... Um, about maximizing your time, you know, a lot, a lot of a lot of um, athletes um, or a lot of people who are trying to train um, have, have full time jobs, you yeah, know. And yeah. one of the things that they, they often say is, "I don't have time to train." Yeah. Um, and going back to what you were saying, I mean, Olympic year um, leading up to twenty twelve, I had a full time job as a teacher. <laughs> wow, um, yeah. I had two small children, uh, you know, a six month old and a and a two year old. Um, obviously. Married as well, 
Um, <laughs> you've got bills to pay. Yeah. I worked a full-time job with two kids and I had to train three times a day. Yeah. Three times a day. And I never missed a single session. Wow. So, you know, when, when people say, oh, I don't really have time to fit it in. Come on. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a way. You can do it. You know, yeah. like I say, I mean, I, my first session started at 4.30 in the morning. And 4.30 till 6.30, that was my first session. Man. Which meant I had to be in bed, 7, 4, 8 o'clock, lights out, done. Um, yeah, you, know, you can't squeeze I, it in then. I, I yeah. had to just, you know, sacrifice watching Love Island, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. You know, forget it. Big it's sacrifices, done. man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's the, that's the type of thing where you just think, you know what, if I, I'd, rather, I'd rather dedicate my time to this. Absolutely, yeah. You've got the rest of the time to sit and play on Facebook, watch TV, you know, yeah, that sort of yeah. thing. And I just, that's, that's the way I live my life, you know. I would say, but even in those times, like, I'm, I'm sure on the weekend, you would kind of let yourself loose a little bit, or, or no? Uh, no. No. <laughs> I, I, I was very much, I mean, obviously, I, I was striving to make Olympic teams. I was yeah, striving to yeah. make Commonwealths, where, for me, in my head, knowing the limitations I had, like we've just spoke about, for, yeah. you know, physiologically, the, the, the talent that I felt I was, you know, given. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I didn't do that. I just didn't. Um, hmm. That's not to say that, you know, if you're just a, you know, a guy who just wants to complete a, a regular triathlon, but have a bit of, you know, t have a meal out with your wife. Have a, yeah. But I, I was, I was so fanatical. Um, Focused. Yeah, yeah. Um, my wife would say, let's go to the cinema on a Saturday night. And I would say, no chance. I'll go on a Wednesday afternoon because there's nobody in there. I might catch a cold off. Somewhere. Oh, yeah, you yeah. Know, literally, I don't, I, that's how, you know, I was literally on it. Um, yeah. Certainly those years where I wanted to get the best at myself, I, I wouldn't deviate from that. Hmm. Um, if I had a night out, I knew that I would suffer the next day. Yeah, even um, a couple of days later. Even yeah. a couple of days later. Um, if, I mean, I, I didn't really drink much anyway, but even like, if I just deviated from my nutrition or if I, you know, had a couple of beers or whatever, it would be in my head when I'm on my, st when I'm on a start line, even if it was three weeks earlier, it would, it would just be in my head. It would head. affect you. Yeah. yeah. Mentally, yeah. as much as anything, it probably, it probably wouldn't affect me physically. Mentally, it would just nag away at me. So I just didn't do it. 